to the Swear Wolves Horror Podcast YouTube channel, video companion. I'm Brett, and today we're going to be talking about these two lovelies right here. We got the NECA Toonie Terrors, A Nightmare on Elm Street, Freddy Krueger, and the NECA Toonie Terrors, Friday the 13th, Jason Voorhees. Um, apologize for the bandage. Slice my finger open. Don't know how, but we'll make it work somehow. Um... These just got released. There's actually uh, four in the first um, wave of these that have come out. There's also Pennywise from the uh, 1990 uh, TV movie It, and then there's the Pennywise from the new theatrical release. Uh, but I did not pick those up. I just picked up Jason Voorhees and Freddy Krueger. So let's take a look first at, uh, we'll look at Freddy first. All right, so as you can tell, these are very cartoon looking. In fact, they're very 1960s, 1970s, Scooby-Doo uh, inspired, I would say. Uh, we'll look at the package here. Like I said, NECA, Toonie Terrors. It says A Nightmare on Elm Street on the marquee back there. And you can see in the background, once we get the package open, we'll take a look. But the background looks kind of like a, a movie theater. You got a movie poster for A Nightmare on Elm Street right there and, uh, and right there as well. Um, just Freddy Krueger is all it says kind of a marquee style. And on the back, we have um, bring the fun of Saturday morning cartoons to your horror collection with these adorable little creeps. Pick your favorites or collect them all and make every day Toonie Terror time. Uh, this is a bonus backdrop display. So as you can see, you can cut this out, follow the dotted lines let's, with a pair of scissors, and then you can stand them in front of it. And, uh, They'll look like, of course, Freddy will look like he's in a boiler room. So that's all that we got on there. Um, the sides just says Toonie Terrors. Bottom is the credits uh, of everybody. Uh, but that's the Freddy Krueger. We'll open him up in a second. But first, let's get to the main man, Jason Voorhees. Comes with a machete. Looks like it goes in his hands. A very large uh, machete. And as you can see, uh, you can see it on Freddy's fingers too. It's kind of got that paint is uh, a little off color to simulate uh, metal, uh, to simulate metal and uh, the shine of the light on there. So that's what's going on with this one as well. Uh, Toonie Terrors, Friday the 13th on the marquee. You got Friday the 13th. This is not an actual photo from um, the movie. And neither of them are, actually. I was just looking at the other one. The other one looks more like the original Nightmare on Elm Street movie poster, but this is just a picture of this guy right here. Jason Voorhees on the marquee. And in the back, more of like a wooded setting. Again, it says the same thing right there. Bring the fun of Saturday morning cartoons, yada, yada, yada. Cut this out, and uh, it'll look like a backdrop. So I'm going to go ahead and get these two open. We'll bring them out. We'll stand them up, and we'll see what's going on with them. All right, just real quick before we get into the figures, I wanted to show you the background uh, box office that came in the packaging on the on the actual card here. Uh, you can see Nightmare on Elm Street. You got the Freddy Krueger Nightmare on Elm Street um, movie posters with a couple claw marks, uh, little skull there, dead guy selling tickets, and a spilled bucket of popcorn. Same thing over here. The only difference is the movie posters, and there's a hatchet on this one instead of uh, the claw marks. Pretty pretty simple. Um, don't know if I'm going to cut these out uh, or not, but uh, we'll keep them. We'll keep them. All right, let's talk about these figures a little bit. Uh, first up, we got Freddy Krueger. Very much so a stylized, cartoony uh, version of Freddy Krueger, but I love it. I love the simplicity of it. I love the straight, um, the lines, kind of just making him just like a cartoony type villain. You know, he's not scary. Look at that. That's a, that's not a bad face at all. Uh, he definitely got the, uh, knives on the end of his glove there. The glove has good detail in it. The sweater even has good detail, some rips, some tears, making it look old. Uh, he's got the fedora on. It doesn't come off. His head does swivel at the neck, just like that. Uh, his arms do move at the elbow, or at the elbow, at the shoulder. So you can pose him in, in different creepy positions. Uh, but he is permanently stuck in this kind of creeper pose, uh, sneaking around. Uh, the back here, 
is just more of the same, just the sweater with the torn, uh, the frayed ends here at the at the bottom of the pants, a couple of wrinkles there. But it, all in all, I, I really like the sculpt. I really think they did a good job of capturing what they were going for on this. And like I said, it's it's the toony terrors. These are supposed to be very cartoony. Freddy can't stand on his own though, so they include this this base, which I am very thankful that NECA did include that because uh, you know standing figures posing them is something that collectors like to do, especially out of the box collectors. Uh, which I consider myself a majority out of the box collector. I like posing my figures. Um, Jason, different story. Jason does stand on his own because he's got these big old honking feet here. He's kind of like Frankenstein's monster uh, in a way. Uh, put the I put the machete in, and Jason does have movement in his arms at the shoulder. Uh, you can even make him walk, kind of like like Frankenstein's monster, um, or not. His head does swivel. The mask does not come off, much like uh, much like Freddy's fedora. It's stuck on there. This is very much so a part three, uh, Jason, uh, Jason Voorhees. Uh, but good detail nonetheless. You got the, the rip in the pants. I remember he gets stabbed in the knee in one of the movies. I don't remember which one it was. It could have been part five, so it could not have been Jason at all. Anyway, he's got some rips. I guess some frayed ends here uh, on the bottom of the shirt. Some uh, wrinkles and everything the hands uh, just the just did a wonderful job of capturing the the style uh his legs do move at the hip but that's it can't move him at the knee but you don't need to he can stand on his own we might have to tilt him back a little bit he can stand on his own and i think NECA did a really good job of capturing the vibe that they were going for, and that vibe is that Scooby-Doo, uh, 1969, 1970 Scooby-Doo, uh, is, is, you know, where, at least that I remember, now granted I saw it in reruns, but that's the Scooby-Doo that I love, Scooby-Doo, where are you? And I love it so much that I decided to go out and get these. Now, these are only at Walmart, oops, sorry, Jason, just knocked them over. Uh, these are only at Walmart, and these are Scooby-Doo figures, and this one was uh, uh, Scooby-Doo, Fright Face, Fright Face Scooby and the Black Knight. It's a two-pack. These cost like $5 at Walmart, so if you're interested in doing something like this, it's not a big investment. These I got at Target. Uh, Target does a good job of displaying all the NECA figures. They have that whole section in the back towards the electronics where they have NECA figures and Funko uh, so if you're into Funko Pops, they have those as well. Um, but like I said, I got these at uh, Walmart. Now, he's almost like Jason's little brother here. But uh, they're Shaggy. So I got Shaggy and Scooby, my two favorites. Here's Scooby. He's Fright Face Scooby. I, oh, yeah, his eyes pop out. It kind of reminds me of the old Ghostbusters. Remember the real Ghostbusters? They had those uh, action figures that were like... Ray stance, he'd be like, bruh, bruh. that's kind of cool. But anyway, I thought it would be cool to pose them uh, on my shelf, maybe with like Shaggy running away from Jason um, and uh, Scooby running away from Freddy. I think that adds a little bit to it, and and the proportions are about right. You know, uh, Shaggy's a good couple inches shorter than Jason, which is what he would be, and and. Scooby uh, is smaller than Freddy, so like a dog. Uh, they did come with uh, their counterparts here, the evil guys. This is the Black Knight, and they really don't care about that. And this is the Headless Horseman. I don't know what I'll do with these. But that's the NECA Toonie Terrors, Jason Voorhees and Freddy Krueger, along with the Walmart-exclusive Scooby-Doo 50-year anniversary two-packs. Um, I, I'm going to set them up. I'll pose them. Hopefully I can drop a picture of it in here when it's on my shelf. But, uh, I thought this would look really cool together, uh, add a little bit of that more cartoon flair to it. Although they are different figures. I think they do fit in well, uh, with the style. As a matter of fact, I don't know, Headless Horseman is a little smaller, but, uh, I could even put these guys up too. Yeah, probably just stick with the traditional horror figures other than the cartoon ones. That's it for me for this episode of the Swearwolves Horror Podcast YouTube companion channel. Uh, you can find us at theswearwolves.com. Uh, give you links to our Facebook page, our Twitter page, 
our Instagram page. Follow us at all those places. You're obviously already watching us on YouTube. So if you haven't already subscribed, please subscribe, like, give a comment down below on anything that you might want to see. I'll try to review it uh, if I have it or I'll go out and get it. Uh, so if you have any suggestions or comments, please let me know in the comments down below. Also listen to our podcast. We are on iTunes, Spotify, wherever you find your favorite podcast, you can look up the Swear Wolves Horror Podcast. It's a weekly podcast that we do that is about horror movies where we review everything that is horror. So for the Swear Wolves, I'm Brett. Zoinks!